Hey guys, it's Jim and it's time for another requested review. This one is for Mike again. Thank you so much for these requests. Really enjoyed watching these movies because this is another Michael Mann movie. This is Thief from 1981. Now Michael Mann is obviously a legend because he's he's done Heat. He's done um, uh, Manhunter, which I just reviewed for Mike. This was his first film. This is his debut film. Thief is the first one and what a debut now i don't love the film i must say i i just think it's really solid i think it's a really solid ground level street you know gritty um crime film and it's impressive with this because it it shares a lot of similarities for me with mob films and other crime films you know share some similarities to scarface and goodfellas and the scorsese style of films but it actually came before a lot of those films. I feel like this is kind of a tribute in a way to The Godfather. It's kind of the jewel thief version of Godfather. So James Kahn stars as this jewel thief called Frank, who is in love with this woman, Jesse, played by Tuesday Weld. And it's all about his desire to get out, you know, to do one last job, to get away from this life, to settle down, to find some level of normalcy with this woman and that theme is always running through crime films so you have to remember this was 1981 you know a lot of the films that we know about that kind of thing Carlito's Way, um, Scarface, I know Scarface is a remake but um, you know all those films about escaping the gangster life um, hadn't really reached prominence yet I know we'd had The Godfather but it wasn't really a recurring storyline theme and, and Michael Mankin just jumps onto it effortlessly and really makes you buy into that theme and really makes it um, interesting and relevant and very ambitious for a first film. I tell you, I am getting more and more into Michael Mann the more I see. I think he's an incredible filmmaker. I haven't seen James Caan in much, which is a shame because he's bloody great. He is fantastic in this. It is such a believable and charismatic performance. You believe that this guy has been doing scores on the street and doing you know, Jewel Thief for how many years? You believe it fully. It completely bodies the um, performance. It's an incredibly impressive performance, full of great little outbursts and great little moments where we get insights into the person that he is. Moments of just um, charismatic um, crime film acting, basically lines you'd only hear in a crime film that are badass, but also tragic and also silly, but also uh, memorable. Look, in what I do, there are sometimes pressures. What the hell do you think that I do? Come on, come on. Come on, every morning I walk in for five months, say hi. What the hell do you think that I do? You sell little fucking cars, that's what you do. I wear $150 slacks, I wear silk shirts, I wear $800 suits. I wear a gold watch. I wear a perfect D flawless three carat ring. I change cars like other guys change their fucking shoes. I'm a thief. I've been in prison, all right? So what? I don't care. So what? Don't tell me. So what? I never even told my wife that. I don't Who care. is now gone? And I feel like he's very human in this because he is genuinely in love with Jesse and he genuinely wants to get out of this life and he desires that. And I feel like there's some very human moments between them when they're having conversations where he's trying to explain to her, look, I do want to leave this, but it's all I know. I have to do this one last score. I have to do what I'm good at. But you know, it's a real theme in this film of the sense of loss and yearning and loneliness and isolation that is in the crime world. You know, and it's, it's, it's like, he's a tragic character, Frank, because it's the only thing he's good at, you know, is, is being a thief. So it's almost like you you really sympathise a lot in the way of a lot of the gangster films where you do sympathise with the gangsters because it allows you to be to realise actually you know what else would Frank do? This is the only good thing he's good at. This is his place in the world in a in a, in a really weird blurring the lines morality type way. A really fantastic scene in a cafe where he's convincing Jesse to be with him. And it's, it's ultimately the conceit of the film is that relationship. It's him, it's a love story really. Him wanting to end this life to be with her and it, to, to be normal in some way, to get something good out of this in the end. You really feel in the trenches in this film, you feel the city, you feel the atmosphere, you feel the streets and you go on some heists in this. Like you literally witness 
the characters doing a heist in this. Like, you, you know, there's no kind of dramatization of things happening. You just witness a, witness them doing it, witness them breaking into a place and witness them doing their thing. So it's just very much, very involving because he just chooses to show them do a job. There's no conflict, there's no drama to it. You just see them doing a job. So you see them in their element. You see, um, you get an idea of what it is like to be one of these thieves. Robert Prosky is also in this film as a really cold and horrible boss. Um, you know, the guy who just has Frank under his control, has him do jobs for him, doesn't care about him at all. You treat what I tried to do for you like shit. You don't want to work for me? What's wrong with you? And then you carry a piece in my house. You one of those burned out, demolished wackos in the joint? You're scary because you don't give a fuck. But don't come on to me now with your jailhouse bullshit because you are not that guy. Don't you get it, you prick? I'll whack out your whole family. People will be eating them for lunch tomorrow in their wimpy burgers and not know it. You get paid what I say. You do what I say. I run you. There is no discussion. Now, while this film received universal acclaim, Michael Mann used Tangerine Dream, the band Tangerine Dream, to do the score. And it got a Razzie for worst music, which I'm really shocked at. I really love this score. Again, it, you know, it's 80s. This band also done the score for Near Dark, the 80s vampire film. But I feel like um, it was an early indication of Michael Mann loving to use music to um, use a set, create a mood you know send a message it's really effective i've no idea well how this got worse musical score I, I really love the score in it he is an incredibly involving filmmaker with lots of subtle tricks and techniques that he went on to use in the rest of his career he really is a filmmaker who you don't realize he's doing certain things but music can creep up on you and camera angles can creep up on you and the way he's kind of transitioning between scenes can creep up on you but it's all kind of washes over you in this real kind of um, uh, absorbing and um, thought-provoking way. Basically a nihilistic film about the hopelessness of this situation, uh, about the, um, the situations people get themselves into, about the desperation of life, about the loneliness of life, about that horrible realization that all you know might be something bad. And you know, but it's about empathizing with that. It is a really, really good, solid film. Thanks again to Mike for requesting. I have one more request to get through uh, for Mike. Thanks for everyone requesting at the moment. I've also got someone else with a request to be done. I've got another re request, a couple of requests after that, so thank you. If you do want to request a review of any film, uh, look in the description below, instructions how to do so. But yeah, thanks everyone. And I am going to be doing so a mixture of requests and new videos, so subscribe, check out my other videos if you're a movie geek just like me. I'll see you guys next time.